Let's go through a couple of examples of using Avogadro's number to convert between atoms and moles. And as I do this, I will mention some of the guidelines that will help you do these questions correctly. So in this question, we are asked how many atoms of zinc are in 3.25 moles of zinc? You want to start by identifying what is the question asking you to find. And then remember, start a calculation with the number having the simplest units wherever possible. In this case, we're only given one number, 3.25 moles. So we're going to start with that number for our unit analysis. Also, when in doubt, you should convert to moles. So if you don't know what to do first, always convert to moles and go from there. In this particular question, you are given moles, so that's what you start with. Also, always include your units and your chemical species when you write a number. We've got 3.25 moles of zinc. So let's start converting that to atoms. So we're going to set up a fraction. The most important thing to understand is whatever units you start with, ensure that's on the bottom of your first fraction so that those units cancel out correctly. And in this case, we can convert directly to atoms because we know there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms for every one mole of zinc. This is what Avogadro's number tells us. It's important to not use slash type indications when doing this. It's much better to write this out with a nice full line so you can clearly show your units cancelling. When you use slashes, it may seem to save time, but it does make it much harder to follow your work. Also remember, you should show your cancellation. So I'm going to cross out these moles of zinc, they cancel out, and we're left with atoms of zinc, which is what the question asks us to find. It's also much better to always do your calculation in one single process. In this case, that's pretty straightforward because there is only one conversion to do. As you move on in the course, you will find that you will have more than one in a single question. It's important to string those together and only round to your final sig figs in your final answer. If you do have to break a calculation into parts, try and keep one extra significant figure as you go. Okay. So how do I enter this in a calculator? Well, I'm going to start with my 3.25. I'm going to multiply by 6.02, exponent button, 23. Hit the enter key, and the answer is 1.96 times 10 to the 24. Always ensure you write your units. In this case, atoms of zinc is my units. And that's my answer. Let's do one more. How many moles of krypton are in 4.58 times 10 to the power of 25 atoms of krypton? So let's identify the number we have, 4.58 times 10 to the 25 atoms, and what we're trying to find is moles of krypton. So this is the opposite of our previous question. So in our unit analysis, we'll start with our simplest number, in this case the only number. We're going to set up our conversion fraction, making sure that our units cancel correctly. You'll notice that I add the units first, because I consider those the most important, and then I put in the numbers that go with it. In this case, it's Avogadro's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms for every one mole. And then from there, I can see that my atoms cancel, leaving me with the moles that I'm, the question asked me to find. So in my calculator, 4.58, exponent button, 25. In this case, because the Avogadro's is on the bottom of my conversion fraction, instead of multiplying, I'm dividing. Dividing by 6.02, exponent button 23. And that will give you an answer of 76.1. Again, be sure to write your units, moles of krypton. 